G'day, fellas. And welcome to game number 13 of the Outback Octagon. I've got quite the story to tell. Oh, my Lord. Have a look at that. Corvinus 1. I thought you... I, I didn't realize he was from the North Island of New Zealand. Have a look at that. Wow. All right. Well, look, we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's introduce our players for today. Uh, we, we had a couple of technical difficulties over here on Twitch and technically for you guys on YouTube as well, but I think we've managed to solve it. So hopefully this is all looking decent for you guys. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the north of the map in the color teal. Representing the Japanese, playing as the Juicy Legacy, it's Duyakusi Twitch. He's got a beautiful spawn up here, not too many people around him, and especially if we go around that clock, the next person he's going to find is over in the east of the map, playing as the Order of the Dragon, representing Team Republic of South Africa. It's Wamen. And to her west, in the color orange, playing as the Chinese, representing Team 3D, it's B. It's got a beautiful little spawn here. Gold, berries, wood, deer. In fact, there's quite a bit of deer on this map. And sheep. There's a lot of sheep. I, is this rigged? This may be rigged. I think, you know what? I think it's rigged. I think this is the map rigged. It, it feels impossible for it not to be rigged. Um, so, oh my gosh, have a look at the berries as well. There's just so much food here. All right, well, over to the west of B. In the color green, playing as the Ayubids. Representing Team Hungary, it's Corvinus 1! And just to his very slight west, less than a screen away. You can technically get them on the one screen. In the color blue, representing Team My Insanity, hailing from Belarus, it's Anatand. In the west of the map, in the color red, playing as the Byzantines. Representing Team Germany, it's Lash. And I've just realized there was, there was a sneaky little man who snuck his way into a, I, I don't actually know how he managed to out-sneak me here, but he has obviously invested a lot in sneak at this point. Uh, he is, he's rolled a nat 20. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it, back over in the east side of the map near, near Whammon, uh, playing in the color purple, representing Team Liquid, uh, currently living in Sweden, but probably representing the team United Kingdom, because, you know, that's where he hails from. It's Liquid Demu! How did he get over here? And, you know, he's been here for a while. It was just a matter of, like, me not seeing him on the minimap. I think that's it. He's got this very nice snug place on the minimap. You can't really spot him out. He's definitely going to be under the radar here, but he does find himself in between everybody else. But that is not the final player of the game. In fact, the final player of the game spawned in in the color yellow. Playing. As the Delhi Sultanate, another player from our Scandinavian region. I, I've already offended the Scandinavians once this weekend, and let's make it let's make it a double. I'm gonna go for Denmark. I think he I think he's Danish, but you know it doesn't really matter. They're they're all the same. It's the kid. It's Voldemar. He's back. We got him again. I want to see what action he's gonna be able to bring to us today because this guy is an absolute talent when it comes to Age of Empires and FFA in particular. He's a very good, competent player. So let's get to it. Let's talk a little bit about what we've got today. Of course, we've already seen the absolute insane amount of sheep underneath the town center here of Corvinus. Let's take a look and see exactly how many he's got. 33 sheep. 33 sheep. It's, it's a reasonable amount. You know, that'll last him... Depends. If he's New Zealander, maybe, maybe about 33 nights. If it's anybody else, you'd be looking at a couple of years. That is for sure. It's plenty of time. However, I don't know if he's necessarily got plenty of time because to his west, he's going to have to deal with Anatan, and to his east, he will have to deal with B. If there's one thing to take away from this, though, it's the fact that Anatan and B both have civilizations that don't really want anything to do with him early on. And he's playing the Ayubids, which is a civilization that can definitely get away with getting aggressive. So here, you know, Anatan's got a beautiful spawn. He's got relics very close to him, two of them immediately. He's got a third one to the back of his base that he's just scouting out now. He's also got a relic to his to the north of his scout. Currently, that's four. He's got plenty in the middle. There's just so many relics, really easy for him to access. So he's going to have an absolute field day in this game. If he can make it to the Castle Age and get those relics, the only trouble is that Corvinus 1 is going to be, going to be looking for blood. Uh, on the other side of him with B, the fact that B has got plenty of sheep 
definitely says to me, hey, B, you can go to TC and you're going to be fine. Because that's normally one of the biggest issues you've got with China. It's how much food do I have? How far do I need to get that town center uh, away from my main town center? Because ideally you want to try and keep it next to it, but uh, it can be hard securing Hunt. He's got plenty of food. And that to me just says, I can go to TC. And that gives Corbinus one time. So whether he looks to... I mean, he can't really migrate away from this position. He's playing the Ayubids, which is arguably the worst Civ to get stuck in a spot like this because they don't have the ability to build another landmark. Uh, so he is going to have to fight out of the corner. He is going to be like Mike Tyson today. So we'll be looking at the action down there, that is for sure. Now, when it comes to positioning, I would have to say the most favorable positioning in this game is, in my opinion, by far, Lash. And that's simply because he has no immediate threat and he has neighbors that have neighbors that are closer. Voldemar's closest neighbor, Diyakusi, may look to put pressure on him. And at the same time, towards the south, Anatan will undoubtedly be locked into combat, whether that's with Corvinus or whether that is with B. On top of that, we've got Demu, who's over on the east side. And he's pretty close here to Whammon. And I suspect she may be looking to get in on the action as well uh, with, uh, with some aggression. Now, one thing I will just remember to say... Um, so uh, we've got the chat up in the top right-hand corner, but because of the technical issues, I forgot to subscribe to Anatan because he's the one whose stream we're watching. So there might be ads that happen dur during the stream or dur during this right now. Uh, so this up here that you guys will see, which is meant to be the in-game chat, might actually just be an ad. So sorry, sorry about that. It'll, it'll be a tiny little portion of an ad, but hopefully we can fix it up. Uh, and I, I know that sometimes like the ads on Twitch especially can be quite long. So I don't know what Anatan's uh, monetization status is, but I suspect he's probably got a couple of ads that may play throughout the game. But it looks like it's going to be the eco wing that Corbinus 1 goes up with here. Age ups are starting to come through. Only a few players remain in the first stage, and it's actually going to be Anatan of all people who is still slowly making his way up. And have a look at this. This is very intentional. Only the one villager. Take a look at how many resources he's got in the bank. He is almost ready to pull the pin and go to Castle Age. Does he think about going into a Burgrave? It is a viable option for him, considering the proximity the Corvinus is to him. So perhaps that is his consideration. Duyakusi also going to age up now. Nice little meditation gardens he's got here in the north of the map. He's got his own little private pond. Unfortunately for him, no fish though. And that's always great to see. I tell you what, whenever there's bodies of water like this, whenever there's water or whenever there's uh, fish inside, especially deep sea fish, it can really skew the balance of the game. If you get one person who knows what they're doing, oh boy, you can have a tough time. Last person to age up though. It's going to be Liquid Demu. Now, when it comes to Demu's strategy, it appears he may be thinking about going for a second town center. Alternatively, he could be looking to level up that town center into a... Oh, actually, he's already got the level two. Or the the, uh, the level one town center, so he could potentially go for a level two. But look at this. It's, it's just going to be a very quick Regnant's Cathedral from Anatan. And interestingly, going into the mine work does obviously have the option. He's already picked up the... Uh, the or he's got access to the riveted chain mail. Steel barding, of course, in the Castle Age is going to be incredibly powerful. And I'm excited to see this because we haven't really seen much of the mine work outside of the Order of the Dragon. Uh, and speaking of Order of the Dragon, it looks like Whamon has opted to go for the Ark and Chapel here. It's a pretty decent spot that she's got, actually. Gets the, she gets the gold, she's got the wood line, and of course she's got sheep underneath the Ark and Chapel as well, which is quite nice for her. But now Demo gets the age up through as well. Looks like he might be thinking about just going Castle Age. We can check and see. Yeah, he's got so many vills on gold. It's got to be a Castle Age when you see that many vills there. Meanwhile, towards the north of the map, the walls are starting to come up for Voldemar. He's looking to just make sure that he's got a little bit of time he can buy. Relic-wise, he doesn't have too much that's close to him. It appears there's only the one sacred site. I don't want to... I don't want to say that there is one sacred site. I just want to say that there appears to be one sacred site. And unfortunately, we don't have the default spectator mode, which would tell us that there's one sacred site. Uh, but we can always hazard a guess. And I suspect that might be the case here. All right. Well, men at arms are going to start coming out for Anatan. Keep in mind, he didn't go for the Burgrave, instead opting to go into the Regnet. So he's going to start producing his Prelates now. He's going to start moving out onto the map. And Relic-wise, I think he's probably... He's looking at a guaranteed four. Uh, make that a guaranteed 5 as Lash is out here and will spot this, but no units on the field at the moment for him will mean it's almost certain that this relic gets into the hands of Anatan. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, he also picks up a 6th potential relic here. So keep in mind, he's got that, that one in, in, inside, two already in his hands, and then three that are close by. But Castle Age is starting to come through. Whammon coming up the rear with that Castle Age. That's now going to be three players. Covenus one also in the Castle Age. And have a look at this. Double racks as well as the stable for him. So he'll be looking to get down and dirty right on board with Lash so that we get a, a, a little bit fewer attack notifications here. 
Uh, no chat. I'm I'm seeing. Hold on. Never mind. Uh, never mind. I, I'm just gonna ignore that. There, there was a guy spamming in Twitch chat that there was no chat, and uh, he he just got absolutely uh, he got absolutely demolished by the mods. <laughs> the, and the reason why he's spamming that there's no chat is because. On, on their stream on Twitch, so just to explain how it works. YouTube, you guys are getting a different experience from the guys over on Twitch. I'm in a call right now with our head admin for the tournament, uh, whose name is Cow. You will know him as the majestic, the magical, the one and only Cow. Uh, and uh, we, we've got that, uh, you know, we, we're very fortunate that we've got him because he's streaming to Twitch currently, and he's just using my voice. He's taking my voice. We're in a Discord call right now. He could, he could speak, but he's not going to, but he could. He could speak if he wanted to. But uh, that's that's essentially what's happening. So the Twitch guys, they don't actually get to see the the, the, the chat, the in-game chat. But uh, but you guys on YouTube will be able to see that. Sacred Sight taken in the middle of the map here. Voldemar not wasting any time. He is, well, I mean, technically he's in the third age. So he has wasted a little bit of time. Uh, he could have got it in the second age. Uh, but Relic count starting to increase here for Anatan. Three in the bag already. <laughs> Three in his hands. And a fourth one just sitting here. He's waiting, looking for somewhere to place it. Outposts are going to start coming in. And I suspect he's going to make himself a very big target with this many Relics early on. Meanwhile, B continues to put the pressure towards Corvinus 1. You can see these Yukunu doing a wonderful job. If we take a look inside the base, he's just gone for the one town center, Song Dynasty, into a triple archery range. Hasn't gone into that second town center. Didn't think about playing it out a little bit longer. Uh, with that economy focus, instead is just going to look to try and focus to take out a neighbor quickly. The trouble that you've got by doing this, though, is that Anatan might just come in and, and steal your kill. You're so close to him. He's definitely going to know about any kind of potential attack. Sacred Sight neutralized in the middle of the map. Anatan not going to be messing around here. It is only the one Sacred Sight on this or in this map as well. Uh, so there is the risk or at least the potential a little bit later in the game for that Sacred Victory. And there's so much space around this Sacred Sight. I love it when there's big spaces like this around the Sacred Sight. It, it just very much encourages someone to come and take this because I can put a keep here, a keep here, a keep here, stone walls up, gate it all around, chuck some culverin in the middle and you ain't ever getting close to it, baby. It is, uh, it, it always feels great to do that, but now B continues to put on the pressure. This is the only gold vein that, that, uh, that Corvinus is going to be able to really contest. I mean, there's a second one over here, but it's very close to Anatan, and if Anatan gets a whiff of what's happening, he will very quickly stamp that out. So, he continues looking to put the pressure on. Let's check in and see how Corvinus is doing for the moment. It's just going to be Camel Lancers, and a Manganelli is going to be looking for here. Very smart moves, looking to try and pick up reinforcements. Let's check in on that north side, see how Voldemar is doing. So, he's got a couple of vills on stone, so we'll be undoubtedly thinking about adding in a keep or two, maybe a second town center, but prob probably some keeps. With this many vills, I suspect it's only going to be a matter of time until keeps start coming up. Lancers are beginning to move out on the map as well. And to the north of the map, Duyakusi. He's just having a good time. I mean, he's playing 1TC Chinese. He's gone to the Castle Age. Don't think... How many relics has he got? He hasn't collected any relics at this stage. And, you know, it's... it's it's absolutely insane to me just how fortunate the spawn was for Anatan. Like, it's kind of crazy. Out of all the sieves that you get, you get the best relic one, and then you literally get in the middle of all the relics. Like, it is a crazy good spawn for him. But the thing is, it's a crazy good spawn, but it's still a contested spawn. It's still going to be a difficult one for him to get out of. Like, he is, you know, he's in the hood right now, and he's definitely got to fight to get out of, out of this position. All right, let's... uh. Let's take a look towards that east side of the map and see how Demu is doing. We'll check in with him. Keep in mind that his nearest opponent, Whammon, she is also in the castle age here. She's managed to collect two relics. Her Regnitz Cathedral is up and running. Relics are inside the outpost. Is she going to be thinking about going to Imperial here? It could be on the cards. It is on the cards. It's going to be the Swabia that gets thrown down, and she's going to be the first one up. So that immediately gives me a very, uh, a, a very good feeling about her prospects for this game because being able to make it up to imperial just to click up to imperial is very important for the order of the dragon because once they get up then all of a sudden they those outposts can get cannon emplacements in it and you can pretty much hold against everything with the cannon emplacements as long as you've got one and two with fortifications and, and cannon emplacements you'll be absolutely fine but you know who's not going to be absolutely fine lash that is for sure he's going to try his best to hold in this position he's got the keep inside the base together with the town center and there is a huge amount of cataphracts coming through. Meanwhile, down towards the south side, we've got Manganel and Battering Rams together with the Ghoul Arms looking to fight up against these Zhukunu. And there are so many damn Zhukunu. Watch how quickly 
They take out this Manganel. He's going to try for it right here. Manages to take out a couple of them, but he looks to force back that Mango. Vils have been brought forward to get a little bit of repairing in as well. But the Mango does go down. And with the Mango going down, the main threat to the Army of B is going to fall here. Let's check back in on the base of Lash. Lash seems to have cleaned things up, but that was only the first wave that he, he was able to deal with. Second wave will be undoubtedly imminent into the, uh, into the base of the enemy. Let's check back in over on that east side because Whammon is... Is she? Yeah, she's in Imperial Age right now. Let's take a look and see those outposts. So she's actually got sprinkled emplacements in them. Oh, she went double sprinkled emplacement instead of going into the cannon emplacement. Ooh, I, I always feel like this is a bit of a mistake. I, I, one of the things I love to see is when you fortify the outposts in the Castle Age and then you put the cannon emplacements in the Imperial Age. So let's see whether she's going to be able to hold with those sprinkled emplacements. She's going to get surrounded with the Gilded Knights, unfortunately. Going to be losing those to all the samurai here. There are so many veteran samurai here, and now she's going to have to think about throwing those outposts down. Remember, she's got access to emergency repairs, uh, which will be able to help her out in the event that she gets into a jiffy, and she is definitely in a bit of a little bit of a, a problem at the moment. We'll say that much. Vil's going to be going for a bit of a run here. Food, economy, isolated, and is going to be idled out for this period. Meanwhile, towards the north of the map, we've got more units inside the base of Voldemar. Diakusi is pushing into his base, looking to cause havoc, looking to, to try and take that king out. There is plenty of units here, and Voldemar is definitely going to have to head back to the drawing board when it comes to the defense. He doesn't have a whole lot of units out on the field at the moment, just a, only three crossbows and a whole bunch of lances, but more vills going down for Whammon underneath her town center. Unfortunately, she's only just realized now, so she's lost a couple more of them, and now those military units from Demu continue to siege down the outpost. Does she have that cannon emplacement? There's the cannon emplacement. You've got to remember, playing as the Order of the Dragon and the Holy Roman Empire, you get those cheaper emplacements, and it just makes it feel so much better uh, because it means that you can, you know, hit the Imperial Age and just get those, click those upgrades immediately. And that uh, that always feels great, but spear, crossbow, combo. These are, these are crossbows, right? Yeah, they're crossbows. It's always hard to tell the difference between Jukunu and crossbow. You know, that's something that I reported to the devs in like, you know, I, I say this quite a lot. Back in the alpha, it's like, hey, the readability on these units is kind of difficult. You know, maybe we could change them up a little bit. Yeah, no, no, not happened. Still, still not going to happen, probably. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that they'd redesign the unit, but it, it can be difficult to tell the difference between them. So, uh, yeah, these, this is 16 crossbows in the north. I'll say, I'll say that much. Meanwhile, Demo is inside the base of Whammon. She's attempting a sacred victory. Well, at least she was attempting a sacred victory. But uh, Anatan, going to put a stop to that. Palace of Swabia has come up for him as well. Also going to be throwing down the university. And meanwhile, unfortunately, today, Corvinus 1 is going to be the piggy in the middle as B and Anatan are going to be putting him to roast. That is for sure. Battering Ram going to start working down these outposts. Cannon emplacement is back here, nice and safe next to the Palace of Swabia. And we do hear, what was that? Was that in the south, in the north, in the west, in the east? It, it sounded like a, a landmark going down. At least that's what I suspect it was. I don't, who was it? Where was it? I, I heard the sound trigger, but I don't see the sound. Well, I, I mean, Drongo, you can't, you can't really... I mean, you can technically see sounds, but you, you get, get the idea. Dude, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried just because normally what happens when I'm recording is I have a second monitor so I can see that I'm recording and I can see what is being recorded. I can't see right now. Like, I, I am recording blind. So you guys right now could literally just be looking at a picture of a shoe and I would have absolutely no idea. And I'd probably be wondering how the hell that shoe got on the screen. It's like, I wasn't even searching for shoes recently, but Google just knows. It's like, here's a new pair of Jordans, Drongo. Pick them up, buddy. Does Jordan still make shoes? I, I don't even know if he does. If, if uh, who, who's it's, it's Shaq that's who's making the good shoes dude Shaq that, that's what that's what oh that's that's a dead outpost right there this is getting worse here for Whammon now keep in mind if, if anything she's got the Swabia and the longer the Swabia keeps going the better it goes the trouble is she doesn't have a whole lot of food economy she's got farms around the town center or around the Swabia but things are not looking pretty right now her village account is down to 16. She's got no military units, but she is looking to hold on. King inside the main town center. And realistically, I think it just comes down to positioning on the outposts just together with like the cannon emplacements. It, it was like outposts were up here in the north. They're not really protecting anything. Like they were protecting the gold, sure. But they definitely weren't protecting the heartland of the Order of the Dragon economy. And I think that was probably the biggest issue uh, with, with that positioning. And, you know, if, if we had an outpost back here and an outpost here with cannon emplacements in it. I don't, I don't see 
how it was possible that Demo could have pushed into this. He might have been able to take out the Regnets and he would have caused some damage and been annoying, but I think at the end of the day, she would have survived and she would have come to thrive. But unfortunately, that was not the case. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map, hold on. Hello. Got some Cataphracts making their way down here from Lash. Everybody's looking to get involved. Now, those Cataphracts make their way around. Let's check in and see how Lash is doing. He's just on the one town center. Keep that in mind. So the Vill count's not too crazy for him. Ah, uh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. I don't even know how that town center went down so fast. I think she might might have tried for a bit of a run. Didn't make it in time, unfortunately. Uh, perhaps I, I was just, you know, I, I was too busy focused elsewhere. I apologize. Well, <laughs> poor Corvinus one. Have a look at this. He's got, oh, he's, he's got a dream right now. There are so many people that are trying to take him out in this game. He's got a handful of units back here to defend. He is fighting for his life in this game. He's doing pretty well on the points at the moment. I'll say that much. But uh, this game, I suspect it's probably not going to be the case. Let's take a look and see how Demo's doing as he adds in a second town center. Things are going well for him. E economically, 57 vils, about you know, middle of the pack for him. The only person who's really gone away with the economy is Anatant. And Anatan also is probably one of the biggest threats in this lobby with the amount of knights that he has got uh, and the fact that he's Imperial Age. So they are very powerful. And now inside the base of B, Lash thinks, hold on, I, I reckon I can probably take this guy out. Hold on, hold your horses here. We've actually got a, a relic inside and Castle Age finally comes through for B here. The last player to make it into the Castle Age, but those knights, oh, look at this. So smart. Vo oh my God, Voldemar eliminated? He may have DC'd. He may have DC'd. He's just been... It says that he was eliminated. So I think it may have been a DC and it's after 20 minutes. So there won't be any discussions about it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. We'll check in on his base shortly. Uh, but you can see what, what's happening here. The Zhuganu are trying to take down the town center by range. Corvinus is now going to look to try and run towards the battering ram. He manages to keep the king alive for a little bit longer. Go Corvinus, go king. He pops it to the other side, but the swing comes through and Anatan takes the kill. On Corvinus 1, you could see he was trying to do a little, bit, a little bit of a pop there and get it in the other battering ram. Doesn't work for him. So, yeah, essentially, B was looking to try and snipe out that town center with the Zhugunu. Could not find it. And up towards the north, it looks like Duyakusi is going to get the points for taking out... Uh, or not, not the points. He'll get the king. The, the king kill up here. I don't know whether he's going to get the points. Look, uh, we, we'd have to probably go back and assess the situation to see whether he would get the points... Uh, there, but it almost seems certain that Voldemar has uh, has been taken or has has DC'd, and we once again see another king go down uh, with B tapping out or not tapping out, but rather getting eliminated here as Lash picks up a kill. So now we've got an interesting situation. We've got three players, all with 250 points. I would say points or 250 population. Uh, whereas Demu, actually no, all four of these players have got 250. Every single person on this in this game right now has got 250. It's an even playing field. That's kind of wild. It's rare that you actually see all four of the remaining players all have one kill each. But I guess today is the day. I suspect it's not going to be that way for long, though, because Anatan, he is looking pretty big in this lobby. And a large component of that is the fact he's got seven relics. Seven relics, a Regnitz Cathedral, and Tithe Barns. He, he is a man with a lot of money in his back pocket right now. All right, well... We now start to see Demu making his way across the map as well. Could be thinking about potentially looking to attack into Anatan while he knows his forces are elsewhere. A couple of Bombards making their way through and Anatan is looking to get down and dirty. At 24 minutes into this game, the keep is under fire. Eight Vils inside together with a King and no army here for Lash. Only... Oh, no, take it back. The Cataphracts have arrived. He's going to need to buy himself some time. That King could look to get a run. I, I would be running that King right now. Oh, that king, that king, he's got a little avenue right here. He's got a little spot. He needs to find a way through. He's going to come out the top. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be it. Lash is eliminated from the game with Anatan picking up the kill. Anatan in a very strong position now. Now, the highlight here might be, or the, the big part that you might be thinking about is, wow, Anatan's so strong. He's got 300 max pop. He's going to take over this game. That's, that's not what's scary. What's scary is his tempo. 
And this is the thing about the Holy Roman Empire and the reason why they are the best civilization when it comes to FFA. It is the incredible tempo they get from the relics together with that Swabia guarantees that they have that economy that comes online quite early. And the best part is they don't even have to skip making military. They can continue making military throughout that castle age period. Maybe they can stop for a little bit, but they get enough out on the field where, you know, they, don't, they can defend themselves. And if they want to play castle, if they have to play castle, they will play castle. But ideally you want to get to Imperial as quickly as you can. And it's just been one of those games where, you know, the Holy Roman Empire player got the relics. And, uh, well, now the question's going to be whether the other two are going to be able to take him down. So hopefully we've got some communication that is happening between these two players. I, I, as I said, I can't see it. Normally I'd be able to see it because I'd have my OBS, which is my recording software, on my screen. And I'd be able to see what I'm showing you guys. And I'd be able to see that the chat is on the screen. Uh, but I can't see that. So I don't know. I don't know what they're saying. But, you know, Duyakusi, keep in mind, he's from Japan. Uh, Japan has a pretty active FFA scene. Uh, but I'm not confident that his English is going to be on par with Demos. Obviously, Demo born in the UK, you know, native speaker, definitely not going to be on par with <laughs> with Demos. But I, I, I suspect his English is probably, you know, at a conversational level. Uh, I don't know how fluent he is, but, you know, he's going to understand m enough to be able to say, uh, you know, attack now, get back, that sort of thing. And it, I, you can just use the, um, you can just use the taunts. I don't actually use the taunts. I, I, I just type. I don't actually know what the taunts are. But you get, like, some pretty crazy taunts, like, Attack the blue player. <laughs> yeah, there's people that know the taunts as well. It's kind of wild how you get like 73 and it's like, attack the pink player. Defend the pink player. Oh, I, there, there's there's so many taunts. It's kind of wild. But uh, it, hold on. Damn it. I, I don't know what's happening right now. But it looks like the two blue players might be teaming up on the purple player. And <laughs> oh, that's a lot of... You know, okay, okay. Does Duyakusi realize that the real threat here... Is, is not the Japanese player, but instead the Holy Roman Empire player. Because when you see that many knights, surely there's something that clicks in your head that says, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. That's a lot of knights. <laughs> and I, maybe my enemy is not the Japanese player today. But it looks like Demu is going to be trying to take a fight underneath the town center. He's got Ozutsu at the back, but the knight numbers surround him completely overwhelming his army. There are so many damn knights here. And from behind, it looks like Duyakusi might be able to pick up some reinforcements. Definitely going to help him out. And while he might lose that main battle, oh gosh, the king's inside and that town center is going down. He needs to make mogul moves right now. I need to see Duyakusi underneath this TC, whether he's going to realize or not, and whether he even gets there in time. And even if he does get there in time, whether he's going to be able to do it, you can see just how much damage the Wallalol is going to come through. Dem is going to try. He's got a double. Is he going to be able to find it? The snipe attempt, not able to happen. Doesn't manage to do it, but have a look at this. Duyakusi now underneath the town center. Duyakusi, the best thing that you can do right now is defend Demu like, like your life depends on it, because it really does. Because the moment he goes down, Anatan is turning his anger towards you, my friend. Now the Knights underneath the town center of the Japanese castle try their best to take out the juicy legacy forces teal on blue it's a little bit hard to see but you do have the cavalry against the infantry the palace guards are doing their best on the front line they've got the elite upgrades and he's done well to hold he's done well to make his way through this somehow anatan's numbers are not as strong as uh, as they should be now the question is going to be whether duyakusi takes the kill for himself or not and if he does massive mistake what he needs to do right now is he needs to work with Demu and take him down and then you want to try and have like that gentleman's agreement that says okay now we can we can battle it out now let's see if that's what we get because it definitely feels like Duyakusi is starting to come online here when it comes to resources let's take a look 142 vils 72 military 107 vils 67 military now keep in mind that a large portion of that is going to be uh the the uh, knights compared to your infantry so even with Duyakusi being outnumbered. He's outnumbered by very, very good units. So this could be tough for him right now. Anatan has rebuilt quickly. Demu has fought in 59 villages. He's only got a very small army and needs time to rebuild. Demu may have copped a little bit too much damage in that last engagement and now attempting to run away from the fight. Duyakusi is going to have to turn back around and just take the fight. He doesn't want to do it though because taking this fight, he's going to compromise his mass. He wants to try and retain as much of that mass as possible so that he can have a good fight. And you could see the these reinforcements, even just having these extra little spears here would have been such big value for him. It would have given him a little bit more time to play with. Spears do make their way down, but now the numbers have been thinned and it means that Anatan is in prime position here to take out the weakest link which will be demo in this game anatan continues to brace and make his way forward 
coming out with the siege workshop on the front line looking to reinforce his position he's got keeps over on the west side at the moment currently sits with seven relics in the bag and cleans up the army of his opponent currently exceeds both players just with his knight count alone so 33 military 33 or 32 military here and he's currently sitting on 63 knights so just shy of exceeding that amount but Elite Spears now coming out for Demo. Keep in mind, these Spears are no ordinary Spears. They've got the Katana Banner Man, but they've also got the improved range on them as well. Demo's going to try his best to hold the line here. Now, one thing to note is Anatan's playing this game hard mode. He's not even going into Lanch Connector yet. Like, Im imagine if he just mixes in, like, three Lanch Connector and all of these units just die immediately. But he's not. He he's like, you know what? We don't even need to make other units. We can just get away with making only, only Knights. You know, you, you've heard of the other website. Now we've got Only Knights. That, that is what I'm starting to feel like Outback Octagon should be called. The Only Knights Tournament. Shogun at Castle. It is under pressure. It's going down. I'm yelling Timber. I'm getting Kesha in here because it is time for us to start removing names out of our songs. And unfortunately, I suspect Demu's name may be next in this ballad of love. Numbers are, numbers are decent for him, though. He's got Azutsu at the back as well. Seven Azutsu. He's going to start pushing up now. Looks to try and make a connection with the Bombards Town Center. Probably going to be going down here. He needs to call upon his ally in the north. Diakusi, where are you, brother? I need you right now. Spearman on Spearman action. You want to try and pull them away. Fight at different angles so that you're able to avoid hurting each other. And he's going to do exactly that. The Spearman numbers continue to dwindle. And he's got a 2v1 situation. And he's not even blinking an eye right now. Have a look at this. Anatan is 100% focused. Town Center has gone down. King has been moved on. I don't even know where that King's gone. Where's that King gone? Hold on. Where's the... Where did the King go? Did he, he escaped. He escaped. He's down to the Daimyo Manor. He's, he's out of here. And the army of Anatan begins to dwindle. But it's still decent. He's on 54 knights at the moment. And now inside the base of Demu. Demu with 13 spears. 24 woods. 90. 150 food. Oh, it's a sad state of affairs for Demu. He just copped a little bit too much damage. Unfortunately, in that earlier engagement, lost a lot of villagers. And now, d remember, Duyakusi's only hope of winning this game is to keep Demu in for as long as he possibly can. And that's not because he wants to utilize or, or bait Demu. That's because he needs Demu at full strength to be able to take down Anatan. Anatan's got a max of 300 population right now. And he's trying his best to 2v1 in this game, and he is looking incredible. And I think this just goes to cement the Holy Roman Empire as the best FFA civilization. Just, I mean, look, it, it's always hard to call them the best FFA civilization because they're relic dependent, right? Like you get you get three relics and okay, you'll have a good game. You get eight relics and you'll have a great game. And that's going to be it. It looks like the king is going to be exposed as Demu surrenders, realizing that it is not going to be happening. And of course, Anatan will be picking up the points for that kill right there. Uh, but uh, look, I, I think in this situation here, uh, it is just so well and truly over with how far ahead Enetand is that, uh, you know, something like that isn't really going to affect the, the outcome of the game here. Uh, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be too upset. Compa you know, compared to what we saw yesterday where players were running their king into the enemy army, uh, it, that, you know, I, I think Demi did a wonderful job there of fighting as, as long as he could have. He could have thrown the towel in a lot earlier, uh, and, you know, I would have understood. I wouldn't have agreed with it, but I would have understood. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it was a valiant effort. And now there were two. Anatand. Diyakusi. Now, Diyakusi's got a decent pop that he can deal with here. He's got a max of 250 that he can go up to. The trouble is... Oh, 350 now for Anatand as well. Oof. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be an uphill battle. You can do 250 against 300. That's doable. 250 against 350 with this much tempo on the side of the big boy? It's, it is really hard to fight from this position here. And Anatan. Now, taking the Sacred Site will look to confirm his victory. Just to make sure that things do go his way. Obviously, you want to try and take that as, as soon as you can once you're down to this heads-up position. And now, overwhelming his opponent. You can see the Duke he's a little bit strapped for ideas when it comes to dealing with the enemy cavalry. The... And, and remember, the, these are no ordinary cavalry. These have got the extra armor. So when it comes to their base armor, you're talking about a, a, a knight that's got as much armor as an English man at arms. That is a big boy. That is a tanky guy that, you know, takes that. It might not seem like much, but two damage off every single shot that you're taking from a crossbow or a spearman really starts to add up when you've got that much health, you know, 324 health. But now stone walls start to come up 
in the front of the base for Duyakusi. Finds a nice little pocket. And the question becomes about how he goes about taking this Sacred Sight off his opponent. We've got eight minutes on the timer. Not too long to go before that victory is confirmed for Anatan. Now, keep in mind, it, it always... The, the best way for you to be fighting against a person who's got a larger population cap than you is you just want to be... You want to be trading with them as much as possible. You want to try and keep their army count down. And that's really hard, especially when you're sitting at 206 and they're at 287. Like, the, the military count at this stage is incredible for Anatan. 117 military, with a huge portion of that obviously being knights, which are one of the best units when it comes to their population efficiency. Mango shots come through. Doing some decent damage on the infantry. A couple culverin shots as well. Now, over on that east side, it looks like more relics going to be secured. Have a look at this. He's up to nine relics. It could be the dream. Oh, my lord. That's going to be ten. He's going to have 11 relics. Is that literally every relic in the game? Duyakusi's got none. I think that might just be every... Yeah, you, but but you, you've got an outpost right here. You can put it in if you want. He's, a, he's got another one in there. So he can go up to 11 relics. And when you think about, you know, the value that 11 relics give you at 180 gold a minute, Okay, I was going to say, please tell me he's got Tithe Barns. Uh, so we see it's at 80 gold a minute at the moment. It, it'll work its way up here. If we take a look at this guy here. 160 gold a minute for each of these. So right now, he is making 1,600 gold a minute for free. That's insane. That's, that's absolutely crazy. 1,600 gold. That's 16 nights of gold that you're just getting every single minute. Like, th th uh, how do you even... How do you even do that? That is crazy. And for anybody wondering about the numbers and about how you get 11 relics on a map, the way that the, the math works is it's three base relics and then plus one for every player. So if, you've, if you're in a 1v1, that would be two players. So you would have three relics plus two. So you'd have five relics. Some maps, there's a, a, a few different rules, like uh, Mongolian Heights, as an example, has six relics on it. And that's just because otherwise, you know, one player is going to get shafted. So that's how they balance out those maps. But yeah, that's why there's 11 relics on this map. All right, well, the push starts to come to shove as Anatan looks towards the base of Duyakusi. And Duyakusi says, no, sorry, Bob. We're not going to be giving up without a fight. Now, keep in mind, he's well within his right. If he wants to give up now, he can do it. If he says, you know what, I'm not going to be able to win here. It is definitely an option for him to surrender. But he is not the type of man to surrender. He's an honorable man. Anatan is at 350 pop, by the way. So, how does Duyakusi go about winning this game? Now, keep in mind that there's a little bit of a trap here in the sense that you've got that sacred site that could be a bit of a trap. Let's take a look at where the king is. If th this is the most exposed king I've ever seen. Like, this is just asking for... I mean, he's got outposts that he could do whack-a-mole whack in uh, if he wanted to. But if, if you made it down there with enough horsemen... Oh, you know what? It's... Oh, you know what? I take it all back. I remember. I remember. You can't, you can't snipe the whole, the Holy Roman Empire with, with units. You need to have, you have to have bombards. They've got too much fire armor. All right, well, the night numbers are overwhelming in this situation. It looks like Anatan is just going to be pushing into the enemy base here. And just looking to take him out the good old fashioned way. He says, we can wait for the Sacred Sight timer. I really don't mind. But uh, we, can, we can also just take you out the good old fashioned way as well. But he's doing a decent job on the defense. Duyakusi not dropping below 220 population just yet. Able to take out the Bombards on the back. And with those Bombards being taken out on the back, it will mean that uh, the, the siege will slow. King is quite close to the front here in, in, the, in the keep towards this position. And Duyakusi is uh, he's not in a bad spot here. So, yeah, like, the you can try for a snipe down here, but you got to remember that you're fighting against someone with 10 fire armor. So unless you've got fire lances, which has got a 34 base of torch damage, and you don't have fire lances as, as the juicy legacy, you only get them as the Chinese, it makes it very difficult to actually uh, to, to siege down those buildings without bombards. You know, if you can sneak in some bombards, then go for it. But when you see that the way that Anatan is expanding that line of sight across the map, he's got safety nets behind him, continuing to come up, making sure that he is covered from all those angles. And even though he loses his army on the main front here, he's not fussed. He, he's not worried about it because he knows exactly what is happening here. And he's got so much damn vision over this map. There's no real surprise coming for him. There's no risk of losing the landmarks either. Like, it, he is absolutely fine in this position. Very, very happy. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think there's any real chance at, at, at a Hail Mary here for Duyakusi. 
short of... Yeah, I, like, even if you manage to get villagers all the way down to the bottom corner, I don't think that it's going to happen. All right, well... More infantry pushing out here. Anatan down to 300 max population. Do you at 220? Keep in mind, Anatan is spending his resources as, as much as he possibly can. But the game continues raging on. And remember every second that goes on, a second closer to victory, Anatan is. 40 minutes into this game, and Anatan's victory looks almost certain. We called him out early on in the game. We said, hold on a minute. Not only does he have the best FFA sieve, but he's got all the damn relics in the game. And nobody, we see three minutes until Sacred Victory. Nobody in the game was really, you know, able to spot that out until until it was too late. He was just online, you know. I think at the point where Lash died over on the west side where we saw him come through, like that was quite a pivotal moment because it went from, when you, when you take it down from four players to three players, in the position that Anatan was in, he, he knew that he can 2v1. He couldn't 3v1, but he could 2v1. And being able to capitalize that in that, in, in that situation just meant that he was in a very good spot. Uh, so, as the as the battle continues on, Anatan continues to trade out. Down to 270 population, but Diyakusi also going down as well. Springwood's able to take out the enemy siege, but remember, just because the siege is dead doesn't mean your Springwoods won't die as well, especially with this many knights close to the front. Culverins continue to push up. And now... He's, he's literally just made only knights this game. How do you... Uh, see, in the, in the, see, there's a part of me that watches this game and I say to myself, you know, is, is this a balance problem? Like, do we have an issue with balance here? He's making only knights and a little bit of siege and he's still able to win by a mile. But then you've got to, like, you've got to think outside the box and you've got to extrapolate a bit. It's like, well, he's got 11 relics and he's playing the Holy Roman Empire and he's got 197 villagers. Like, he's got an insane economy. This is one of the biggest economies we've ever seen in Outback Octagon. Like, you've got to consider all these things. We can't just look at this in a vacuum and say, this is crazy, the knights, nothing is beating them, and he's just, he's only making knights, and he's only making more knights, and he's only making stables. It, 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 you can't think about it that way. You've really got to look at the big picture and go, okay, well, he's had a pretty good game here. He's got a lot of relics. He's in a great spot. Uh, so, you know, it, as I said, you know, we're, we're always thinking about little tweaks that we want to make to balance and the strength of units or, or kings as an example. But uh, I, I think for the moment, this is a, a pretty good demonstration of the power of the Holy Roman Empire, but not necessarily the overpoweredness of the Holy Roman Empire. It's just, I think it's just a good game. And a turn now. He's going to look to defend the last minute on his sacred site. Stone walls have come up to the north of the sacred site. He's got a couple keeps here as well. Outpost starting to come online. He appreciates that the enemy army is actually getting quite big in size. He may have to think about bringing Vils to the middle to de help defend. Does he have a migration? Not quite yet. No shift control A and everybody to the sacred site just yet. Not doing the Donati. But now, pushing forward with all of his knights. I think you'd probably want to avoid fighting in this area, but the reality is you've got 28 seconds left to go. You don't care if you're losing units. You don't care if you're having a bad trade. This is absolutely fine for you because the longer you fight, the longer your enemy is not getting on the site. And now on the backside, the cannons, the bombards together with the culverin fighting up against the enemy Springholds, and it's not going to be any progress that he's able to make. Duyakusi around the east side is going to try for a keep, but with eight seconds to go, ladies and gentlemen, your victor today is going to be Anatan, representing Team My Insanity of Belarus. What a game from him. Absolutely clinical game. 100% clinical game. Uh, probably one of the best Holy Roman Empire games I've seen from the perspective of power that he had over this lobby. Right, like just the, the relics at the early stage of the game were incredible. Let's I want to take a look at the economy stats at the gold collected. Like, have a look at this. He collected 103,000 gold that game. The next highest was 32,000 from Duyakusi. He literally had more than triple the gold collected that game. I wonder how many of it, or how much of it was from relics. Like, that is that is a consideration I would like to throw out there. Uh, but then uh, with your village account as well, he rose to the top very, very quickly once that Swabia was online. And of course, uh, military-wise, he was always a contender throughout the game. Anyway, we'll leave it there and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this game. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.